today I am reading Amelia Bedelia Means Business by Herman Parrish, pictures by Aline Avril. Um, it's chapter six, You're Fired. I'm starting. Amelia Bedelia was glad she had to walk through the park to get home. Walking by the trees and flowers helped her think. What was she going to tell her mom and dad? Her very first job had lasted less than an hour. They might not feel so proud of her now. Amelia de Bedelia spied a big bed of flowers. I know, she said to herself. I'll bring mom some flowers. Then she won't be mad at me. Amelia Bedelia had seen that work for her father when her mom was upset with him. It was worth a try now. She picked up a bunch of flowers in different colors and surrounded and surrounded them with a thir- with a circle of daisies. Daisies were her mom's favorite her two her hers too. She had just finished making up the bouquet when a policeman walked up. Little girl, he said. Where did you fu- get all of these flowers? Right there, said Amelia Bedelia. I don't leave. M- I didn't leave many, but there are still enough for you. The policeman looked where she pointed. You've cleaned out that entire flower bed, he said. No, I didn't, said Amelia Bedelia. It's still very dirty. The policeman shook his head. You can't pick flowers in the park. Therefore, everyone who lives here to enjoy. I live here, said Amelia Bedelia. So did my mom. I picked these for her. You can't do that, the policeman said. In fact, you shouldn't even be standing here. Can you read that? He pointed at a sign stuck on in the lawn. It says, keep off the grass, said Amelia Bedelia. That means you, said the policeman. Amelia Bedelia looked at her feet. Then she looked at the policeman's feet. What about you, she asked. You're standing on the grass, too. The policeman looked in on her. Are you talking back to me, he asked sternly. Amelia Bedelia wasn't sure what to say, to do, to do and to say. She wanted to answer him, but she'd have to talk back to do it. Finally, she said, yes, but he started talking me first, to me first. So, I talked back to you. Then, you talked back to me, and I talked back to you. So, you, the policeman, blew his whistle. Enough, he said. I'll let you off with a warning. With a warning. No, now take those flowers home to your mother. I promise I will, says Amelia Bedelia, as she waved goodbye. Thanks. Amelia Bedelia walked slowly down the path. As soon as the policeman was out of sight, she sat down on a park bench to rest for a minute. A woman was sitting at the other end of the bench with her dog. She didn't look very happy. In fact, she looked very sad. What lovely flowers, she said to Amelia Bedelia. I'd like to give them to you, said Amelia Bedelia, to cheer you up. But I just promised to take them to my mom. How sweet of you, said the woman. She blew her nose. Sorry if I look upset. My boss just gave me a pink slip. Sounds pretty, said Amelia Bedelia. Pretty, she said. It wasn't pretty at all. That's too bad, said Amelia Bedelia. Maybe pink isn't your color. My mom likes white slips with lacy stuff on the top. A curious look came over the woman's face. Then she 
burst out laughing and kept on laughing until tears streamed down her cheeks. Thank you, she said. I needed a good laugh today. My name is Jan. What's yours? I am Amelia Bodilia. Meet Buster, she said, said Diana. Her dog held up its paw for Amelia Bedelia to shake. Wow, Amelia Bedelia said. Buster has a firm paw shake. Buster is best, said Diana. He doesn't care that I was just let go from my job. Me too, said Amelia Bedelia. Then she told Diana what happened at Pete's dinner. Diana laughed even harder than what when she heard about stepping on the pie. We've got a lot in common, said Jana. We've both been fired. Amelia Bedelia was amazed to learn that being let go was the same as being fired. It reminded her that she still had to go home and tell her parents what happened at Pete's. She got up to leave. Hey, Diana, maybe you should start your own business, she said. Jana nodded. I think you're right, she said. I'd never fire myself. I would be fireproof. If you were fireproof, said Amelia Bedelia, you'd never get burned. Right you are, said Jana. Amelia Bedelia scratched Buster behind his ears and said goodbye to Jana. But she didn't get very far. Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. A man was waving at her. Miss, she said, I'm meeting someone here for for the first time. Well, it's a date, and I told her I'd be carrying a, a bouquet. Would you please sell me yours? It's for my mom, said Amelia Bedelia. I'll pay you ten dollars. She said. Amelia Bedelia shook her head. No, I promised. How about twenty dollars? He asked. Twenty dollars. Here you go, she said, handing him the bouquet of flowers. Thanks, he said, handing her a crisp twenty dollar bill. Twenty dollars. Amelia Bedelia waved to Jana and was on her way once again. But then she heard a familiar voice. She peeked over her shoulder. The policeman has had stopped the man with the bouquet. Amelia Bedelia began to walk faster. Excuse me, sir, said the policeman. Those flowers look suspiciously like the ones we grew in the park. Where did you get them? I just bought them. She heard the man answer. From a sweet little girl. Amelia Bedelia began to trot. What little girl? asked the policeman. Amelia began Amelia Bedelia began to run. She darted through the park gates, running as fast as she could. She flew by a sign that said, Slow children. I'm not having much fun with the signs today, she thought as she raced home. By the time she got to her house, Amelia Bedelia was out of breath. Her parents did not seem surprised to see her. We got a call from Pete, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Next time... Call us and we'll come get you. There won't be a next time, said Amelia Bedelia. Oh, sweetie, her mom said. It was a good try. What did you learn from your first job? Asked her father. I learned that the customer is always right, said Amelia Bedelia. That's what they say, said her father. What did you learn anything else? Asked her mother. Yes, said Amelia Bedelia. Learned that sometimes the customer is crazy. Amelia Bedelia's parents smiled. They stopped 
when they saw Amelia Bedelia lower her lips began to trim. It's no fun to get fired, sobbed Amelia Bedelia. Now I'll never get that bike, her parents hugged her and hoisted her up into her, their arms. Don't worry, they said. We have an idea. Chapter 7. The Lemonade Stand. No, no, no. Not stand. Sit. The Lemonade Sit. You know, said Amelia Bedelia. Amelia Bedelia's father. Your mom and I think you should start your own business. Your very, very own business. And there is one business that any kid can start. What, said Amelia Bedelia? A lemonade stand. What, said Amelia Bedelia? A lemonade stand? Ugh. Stand, said her dad. Stand, she said. Stand what? Lemonade, said her dad. Sure, said Amelia Bedelia. I can stand lemonade. I love lemonade. Her father rolled his eyes and said, I know you love lemonade, sweetie. That's why you should make a stand for it. How come, said Amelia Bedelia? Is someone trying to get rid of lemonade? Amelia Bedelia's dad began to turn red. Of course not, he said. You could run a stand. Amelia Bedelia looked bewildered. Dad, she asked, what do you want me to run a stand? Stand! yelled her dad. Amelia Bedelia jumped to her feet. Okay, okay, she said. I'm standing, I'm standing. Now her dad's face was turning even redder. No, he said, not you. Your customers stand. You can sit. Thank you, said Amelia Bedelia. She sat down in her chair. Good idea, said her dad. I think I need to sit down, too. Amelia Bedelia's mother had been in the kitchen, listening to them talk while she finished. She was carrying a cup of, of coffee as she came into the living room. She sat down on the arm of her husband's chair. Amelia Bedelia, she said. Remember last summer? We made a fresh lemonade together. It was delicious, said Amelia Bedelia. And easy, said her mom. Do you remember how we made it? You squeezed juice out of a lemon, mix it with cool water, add sugar until, until it tastes good. Then throw, it, throw in a couple of ice cubes. Bravo, said her mother. Then what? Amelia Bedelia shrugged and said, That's easy. You drink it. Or, said her mother, You could sell it. What if you set up a table and made fresh lemonade? Yum, yum, yum. I know. I love fresh lemonade. Thirsty people will stand in line to drink it. You know, said Amelia Bedelia, that sort of sounds like what Dad was trying to say. Thank you, said Amelia Bedelia's father. Then he turned to his wife and said, And thank you, darling. I couldn't have said it better, better myself. Amelia Bedelia bought 50 bags of lemons on sale. She used the money she'd saved from her last birthday. Her tip from Pete's dinner, plus the $20 she got from her bouquet. Her dad helped her build a stand with that was easy to set up and take down. That way, he 
he said. You can put it up wherever you'll get the most customers. Have you thought of a name for yourself? asked her mom. My name is Amelia Badilia, she said. That's the name you guys give me. I meant, said her mom, a name for your business. Something catchy to get people's attention. Yes, said her dad. Think big. How can I? said Amelia Bedilla. My brain is just one size. Maybe you should advertise, said her mom. If people hear how good your lemonade is, they'll want to try it. Advertise, said Amelia Bedilla. Like the commercials on TV for Wild Bill all around? Sort of, said her dad. But not so terrible. Everybody knew about Wild Bill's Autorama. Bill o owned a car dealership right downtown. He wore a white 10-gallon cowboy hat in his TV ads. He shouted over and over and over that to get the best price. You had to buy your new car from Wild Bill's Odorama, the home of Sweet Deal. Suddenly, Amelia Bedelia had a great idea. She remembered last summer when her parents had dragged her along the Wild Bill's to look at new cars with them. It was boring and hot. She could really have used a break if she set up her stand near Wild Belt Odorama. Plenty of thirst cu thirsty customers would line up for her lemonade when they were tired of looking at cars. Amelia Bedelia hopped on her awful, embarrassing piece of junk bike and and rode down to Wild Bill's Odorama. She found the deal spot for her stand, right near to the right near the entrance. Perfect. This was meant to be. She pedaled home as fast as she could. As she turned into her driveway, a great name for her business. popped into her head. Hooray! Mom yelled at Mom yelled at Amelia Bedelia. Do you have any yellow paint left over from when you painted the kitchen? I needed to make my sign. Sure, sweetie, said her mom. She also gave Amelia Bedelia brushes and an old bed sheet. Amelia Bedelia spread the sh sheet out on the driveway and went to work. Her dad had told her to think big. So she drew a lemon as large as the kitchen table and outlined it with black markers. She was in the middle of writing the name for her business right on top of the lemon when her mom and dad came out to peek at what she was doing. Mom, Dad, stop, hollered Amelia Bedelia. Don't look, I want you to be surprised. They certainly were. So was Wild Bell. And so were the reporters from the TV action news team, as well as everyone in town. Next day, Amelia Bedelia waited until just before lunchtime to open for business. She figured that by then, people would be hot and thirsty and bored enough to want a glass of lemonade. Her parents came along to help. Her dad set up her lemonade stand while her mom unfolded the sign. They attached it. Lots of lemons. Handmade lemonade. To the bottom of the sign for Wild Bill's Autorama. Looking good, said her dad. Terrific name, said her mom. It's perfect, said Amelia Bedelia. I squeeze a whole lemon into every glass. That's a lot, Amelia Bedelia was so proud of her son. 
she admired it. While her dad set up chairs in front of the sand, in front of the sand. Thanks, Daddy, said Amelia, but uh, now my customers won't have to stand. It is more like a lemonade sit than a lemonade stand. Her father kept checking his watch. I have a surprise for you, he said. I called the television station and told them about your business. They thought it was a cute idea. They're sending their news team to an interview to interview you. Amelia Bedelia jumped up and clapped her hands. Really? Will they make a commercial for me? Nope, said her dad. You'll be a story on on news at noon. That's way better than a commercial. It's the real deal. Dad and I are going inside to look at the cars for a few minutes. The said her mom, we'll send some customers out here for you. Thanks, said Amelia Bedelia. I'll get ready. They cut lemons in half. She cut lemons in half and put them in a big bowl, ready to squeeze. Then she arranged the cup, the cups and ice. A few minutes later, a van from the Action New team pulled up. They were the first customers. A reporter and a cameraman walked up to the stand and introduced them themselves to Amelia Bedelia. As she talked with them about her business, she made them each a lemonade. The cameraman started shooting the scene while the reporter began interviewing Amelia Bedelia. I truly appreciate what happened next to you. You have to, to have seen it on TV, down at Pete's dinner. Pete and Doris always turned on news at noon for their lunch crowd. Here it was they saw. Ted Daly here, news at noon. Right outside Wild Bill's Odo Rama, where another business is having its grand opening. An old-fashioned lemonade stand run by this young lady. It's Amelia Bedelia, said Pete. A policeman who was waving pie, was having pie and coffee at the counter looked up to looked up and said, You know her, Pete? I had a run-in with that girl in the park. Pete nodded and said, Officer O'Brien, be glad Doris served you that cherry pie you're eating. They looked back at the TV. Ted Daly so told the Viewers, how Amelia Bedelia made her lemonade while the cameraman shot a close-up. Amelia Bedelia makes every glass by hand. Just the lemon juice, cool water, ice, and a bit of sugar, Ted Daly said. Amelia Bedelia handed Ted Daly a glass of lemonade. I used one lemon in each glass, she said. That's a lot, but it tastes better. It's why I call my business lots of lemons. As Amelia Bedelia pointed at the sign behind her, the camera pulled back so people watching on television. Could also see the sign for Wild Bill's Autorama. You folks are, you folks at home take it from me, Ted Daly. Amelia Bedelia lemonade, um, Amelia Bedelia lemonade made, may be a sweeter deal than you get at Wild Bill's Autorama. Amelia Bedelia was thrilled. Her dad was late. Being on the news was great. Her lemonade was going to be famous. And maybe, just maybe, she'd make enough money to buy half of a new bike. 
That's when the camera began to jiggle up and down. The camera man could not hold it steady because he was laughing so hard. Back at the dinner, Pete said, Look, it's an earthquake at Wild, at wild Bill's. Doris covered her mouth with her hand and gasped. Gracious, Amelia Bedelia's son makes Wild Bill's car... like lemons. Pete shut his eye and shook his head. Back at Wild Bill's Ted Daly turned around to see what was so funny. He looked at Amelia Bedelia's sign too and doubled over with laughter. Then Wild Bill himself came out to see what was going on. Amelia Bedelia was so impressed to see him in person. He was a real celebrity. H Howdy fella, said Wild Bill. What can I do for you? Are you in the market for a new car? Ted and his cameraman tried not to laugh, but that just made it worse. What's so funny there, fellas? asked Wild Bill. Ted pointed to Amelia Bedelia's sign. It, he was laughing so hard he could barely stand up. Lots of lemons, read Wild Bill. That's a sweet idea on a hot day like this. Then the joke dawned on Bill, too. Lots of lemons, he bellowed. Lots of lemons? I don't sell lemons. My cars are the best. My cars are not lemons. Of course not, said Amelia Bedelia. Have a seat. That's why I brought chairs with me. Wild Bill bent down to look at Amelia Bedelia eye to eye. Little lady, he said, are you mocking me with your lemonade? Oh, no, sir. You're famous, said Amelia Bedelia. She pointed at the TV camera. Everyone knows you. Wild Bill looked straight into the camera. Is that thing on? He asked his face turn. He asked his face turn from white as a ghost to red to white again. He strode toward the camera, took off his cowboy hat, and used all ten gallons of it to cover the camera lens. Television screens are all over town went black. Went dark and black. Back at the dinner, Doris and Pete at the policeman stared up at the back screen. Be glad you're not Amelia Bedelia right now, Doris whispered to Pete. Done. Um, next time we'll read chapter 9, and I hope you enjoyed this.